Hi, my name is Andrew Rule. I'm a nephrologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm going to present an article that uh, we wrote recently for the Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled Kidney Function After the First Kidney Stone Event. This is a paper that is a result of work that started back in 2009 when we began enrolling first-time kidney stone farmers from Olmsted County, Minnesota, as well as uh, first-time kidney stone farmers from uh, Jackson, Ville, uh, Florida, who were um, seen at the Mayo Clinic in Florida. Uh, these uh, cohorts were started in order to st understand the natural history of kidney stones as well as complications such as chronic kidney disease. So for this study, we studied 457 controls that were also recruited from the same area and uh, 384 of these stone farmers and we brought them in for uh, study visits. Uh, in the stone farmers, it was about three months after their first stone event in order to assess their kidney function and to compare it to that of controls. And what we found is that the stone farmers had um, similar serum creatinine levels to the controls, but other markers of kidney function were uh, different in the stone farmers than the controls. In particular, the stone farmers had higher cystatin C levels, which is another marker of decreased GFR. They also had higher urine protein and higher urine albumin than the controls. And to assess whether these findings were chronic, we brought both the stone farmers and controls back three months later for a second visit, and we found that these findings persisted, suggesting that these were not just transient findings related to the stone event that resolved over time. To assess um, whether kidney function abnormalities were present before the stone event, we uh, also looked at the stone former's kidney function prior to participating in the study, as well as the controls kidney function. This was based on their medical records, looking at any serum creatinine levels they had in the three years prior. And what we found is that stone farmers and controls had similar serum creatinine levels prior to the stone event of the stone farmers, but at the stone event, the serum creatinine level of the stone farmers went up by about 0.1 milligram per deciliter on average. And then by the time of the first study visit, which was about three months after their first stone event, it had returned to baseline. So there appears to be a transient rise in serum creatinine, as is well known clinically at the time of stone event, but it largely resolves and to, to a baseline value that was present prior to the stone event. So the interesting thing in our study is we found that stone formers have more abnormal kidney function uh, three to six months after their first stone event compared to uh, controls. And these are controls that are matched on age and sex, but we also adjusted for a number of metabolic and clinical risk factors such as comorbidities, such as diabetes and hypertension. We also did 24-hour urine chemistries, things like urine calcium, uh, urine citrate, uh, urine um, volume. These are things that could both relate to the risk of chronic kidney disease as well as the risk of kidney stones. And we found that these associations persisted, that the stone farmers had a more adverse metabolic risk profile for uh, chronic kidney disease uh, compared to controls even after adjusting for these other metabolic parameters and risk factors. So why this is important is over time stone farmers might be at increased risk for developing kidney failure. This has been shown in a number of retrospective studies and over time we hope to follow these cohorts to see if this risk is evident um, in a prospective study design. Um, it also um, points out that these abnormalities in kidney function are evident even after that first stone event um, and this has never been shown before. Thank you for your time. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.